Hi, it's Bob Heil, and we're here at NAM 2012. We're going to talk about some of our new technologies, not new microphones, new technology that we've brought to the microphone industry, dynamic microphones. I hate condensers. I now can prove why I've hated them for 50 years. They have too much gain, too much sensitivity, they have no rear rejection. Why are we using them? They're so sensitive, you hang them three feet above a cymbal, and everything else is there, all the guitars and stuff, but the cymbals aren't, you gotta, there's no reason for that. So we changed that. But I was very fortunate and blessed that six drummers allowed me to go on the road with them. We're talking Danny Carey, Wally Ingram, Drew Hester, these are all major, major players. Had a jazz drummer, Hunter Herman from Pittsburgh. So I had all genre. What we came up with was amazing. They allowed me to sit on their stages with my analytical equipment and find out what was going on. The first thing we did was a kick drum microphone. Yeah, everybody builds one. But it's a cheap little $2 nothing element that has no design to it. It's just there. Well, no. What we did, after looking at all of the analytical equipment of about two years on the road, we discovered that all bass drums average is around 50 to 100. Now, this is a big dynamic. It's an inch and a half. It's huge. All other dynamics you see is about half inch. No, no. We built a big one. And we put a spike passively. We put a low-pass filter right in the middle of 50 to 100. It then goes out flat. And then we come back up between 4 and 6 for the beater. And then rolled it all off at 8K. Now we have an incredible kick drum mic. Even listening to the drum techs, they said, make sure you don't make this go straight in so it's so hard to get the plug up next, angle it. We've listened to everybody and we've done it. The element is huge, it's in a vulcanized shock mount and it, it's just the, it, it's an explosive thing when you put it in the bass drum. And then we got in to the snare drum. You use PR-22. The reason when you use that is the 22 has a very nice peak between 4 and 6K. That's exactly where the snares resonate. And I like to take that underneath, out of phase, with our PR-30 on top. And I will guarantee you, you've never heard a bigger snare drum sound and a PR-30 and a PR-22 under. It's amazing. We also use the PR-30s overhead or underhead. Yes, under. Is that, as I said, with condensers, they pick up the entire room. And it's absolutely not acceptable because you hear everything and it's, it's just not right. Here's a picture of Max Weinberg set up. We have our new 31BW, which is our new 30. It's just half of it, exactly the same sound. And we put it under the cymbal. But because it's only six inches away from the tom, you don't hear it because of our 40 dB of rear. And that's the main thing, is we're bringing you technology you've never had before, 40 dB. You speak in the front, turn it around, there's 40 dB, it's gone. So now we have, we can do underheads, overheads, and of course we can do guitars, we can do Steinway pianos, horns, violins, anything you want. This is your new go-to microphone. Well, I love this microphone when we do it under heads. It, it, it just sounds so great. And then, of course, for our tom-toms, we have our own mount. And what happened here, the Danny Carey from Tool is a very heavy drummer. And he said, now, one of the things I want you to do, Bob, is build me a shock mount 
inside the microphone, so I did. But in traditional Bob Heil style, I built a shock mount for the shock mount. So it's double shock mounted. Thank you, Danny Carey, for the suggestion. <laughs> and we carry that through into our Tom Tom mics, and they're magnificent. The other thing was what do you do with it? There's all kinds of clips, but they don't work very well. So we worked with a jazz drummer, and Hunter Herman is his name. He's out in Pittsburgh. And Hunter is quite a guy. His hobby is tool making. And he has his own, I'm gonna try to get this out of here so you can see that. Area. He has his own tool shop next to his recording studio. So, we put the, the Tom mic on the mount. Now the Tom mic also has a swivel on it that you can put it where you need it. But now on, there's no, no mount that you can do we, like this. We can adjust the angle. And the angle then allows you to move up and down in and out, and put that mic where, right where you need it. And it's all because we listen to our players, but we do something, unlike all the other manufacturers, they just listen, they don't do anything. But it was Joe Walsh, my best friend, ham radio buddy for 45 years. Oh yeah, we got the little music thing that he and I do too. It was his suggestion that I come into this market bring you exciting new technology, because he knew, as a very technical ham radio operator, he knew that this was all out there, but nobody was bringing it to this industry. We wanted to. And in addition to that, we have our own custom shop where we can do anything. We can build you any kind of microphone finish in the world. We do that in-house. The guy that does that with us is a young cat. He's a artist in, in painting on metal he does mic uh, he does uh, motorcycles with Jesse James so that's the level this guy works at but it's